Okay guys, so in this video I've got a couple different products I just wanted to walk y'all through. First off, I've got two separate FPV all-in-one cameras. Now we're all very familiar with these because of the micro builds we've been doing. They're awesome little cameras that are lightweight and work really well. However, uh, nothing new as far as technology but pricing. You're always trying to find the cheapest place to buy them that always has stock. So, I found an Amazon supplier that's selling these for the lowest price that I can find, better than even Banggood, which is saying a lot. So, links down in the description. Um, these are pretty standard, but the pricing is what's special about them. Next, I've got, finally, okay, y'all are gonna make fun of me. This is a patch antenna for my FPV goggles. Now, there's nothing crazy about this, and y'all are gonna trash me so bad. I've been running a circular polarized and a dipole, which typically, I've never seen anyone do this before, but. I didn't have a patch antenna to put on my diversity with my goggles, so I was like, well, I don't want too circular polarized, so I just threw on a dipole. It, I know, it's dumb, but that's just what I've been doing, so I finally bit the bullet and got a nice patch antenna, which I'm pumped about. And then, I've got, I finally went and invested in some nice tweezers. Now, that sounds kind of weird, however, whenever you are building something this tiny with brushless motors, and you've got to get in there and there's like a ton of wires and you're trying not to like, you know, accidentally short something or like hold a wire while you're soldering. These precision tweezers make a world of difference. Okay, so these all-in-one FPV cameras are nothing new, but I'll just go ahead and run you through the different types that I got. So this is a 25 to 200 milliwatt uh, switchable transmitter and it has a circular polarized antenna and it has the little LED display in the back showing you what channel and uh, what band you're in. And now, on the second one, this these are my like go-to cameras. These are the smallest, lightest weight, all-in-one FPV cameras possible. Um, they have the dipole antenna up top, and then on the back, they just have the series of LEDs um, that show you what band and what channel you're in. So, uh, if you want something as light as possible, these are the way to go. This one is 25 milliwatts. These types of all-in-one FPV cameras are nothing new, and manufacturers are cranking them out like crazy right now. The only real notable thing about these is their price is so low, and they're available on Amazon, which is a win. So with this patch antenna, when you thread it on, it's just gonna be pointed off to the side, and it's a directional antenna, so you want this antenna pointed the direction you're flying, and usually, you're gonna fly out in front of you, you're not gonna fly off 45 degrees to your side, so that's where these little 45 degree uh, angle joints come in handy. This 45 degree elbow did not come with the spire net. This is something that I had just, you know, laying around. And then you can thread this on and then point it roughly forwards, roughly. But that way you don't have to like turn your head this way and fly that way. So just something to keep in mind when you're, if you're getting the same patch antenna, uh, and you don't want it just pointed off the side, go ahead and order one of these 45 degree elbows and that will get you pointed in the right direction. Pretty excited about these. I'm excited about everything. So this particular one came with three different types. Um, one is a very uh, small, precise tip. One is a little bit of a more blunt tip. And then one has a little bit of an angle on it. And it's more of a precision tip. So. Um, Let's pop one open and see what it feels like. I'm sure it'll feel just like tweezers, but you yeah, know, whatever. Wow. <laughs> the tweezers I have are crappy compared to these. These are really nice. Um, I'm digging the ceramic tips too. Now, because they're ceramic, don't go prying with them because I'm sure they're brittle and they will crack but that does mean that you can poke around on your electronics board or hold something and you don't have to worry about it shorting. Or, and I think this might even be the most useful part of having ceramic tweezers, is that whenever you're holding a wire and you're soldering, the tweezers are, the, the ceramic acts as like an insulator so it doesn't absorb the heat. So as you're trying to solder something, you're not acting like a heat sink and pulling heat out through the tweezers, the heat stays in the solder and that allows you to make a better solder joint more easily. I hope you liked this type of video. If not, put in the comments down below and say, boo, this sucks, don't ever do it again, it's a waste of time, and I won't. But if you like to see the bits and bobs that I'm ordering and using and the reason why I'm getting them, then comment down below and tell me that you like this and you want more content because I get lots of stuff in the mail that don't quite make it to the videos, but this might be a really cool way to do that. All right, I will see y'all next time.